everyone checking in on Canadian MJ. We'll do the US video some point tomorrow. I was not watching trading today, was flying and driving, but can certainly check back in on the charts. In terms of having a complete pulse on the market, it's a little bit less than my normal videos when I'm literally watching the trading for the vast majority of the day. But one thing that stood out to me is number one, S&P 500 really strong after morning weakness. And the MJ sector did not see that correlation at all. We saw weakness. And right now there's red flags for bulls on these daily timeframes. We're not getting any bounce follow through and further consolidation looks likely at this point. Finally, it looks like we're going to get that weekly consolidation that we know has been overdue. We also have to anticipate seasonality and anybody who's been in the MJ space for years knows that seasonality, we've got winter and early new year as really strong seasons for the MJ sector and summer, it really slows down a lot. And you can just look back historically and you'll find that pattern across a lot of these tickers. And that pattern has been around ever since I was playing the USMJ stocks, penny stocks back in 2010, 2012. So we'll start it off with our major names. Then we're going to look at our tier two names, Hexo, TRST, OGI. Then we'll look at N, T God, VFF, NRTH, a couple penny stocks with CAN, EMH, FIRE. And then again, US names, which are, there's some US names standing out pretty strong here. And again, like I said in the last video, we need to be watching where money is going and if money is going into that U.S. sector. I believe the Senate just introduced a bill to legalize. Obviously, that doesn't mean a whole lot. There's a whole lot of steps to go from here, but there's definitely some, some talking points for the bulls to hope for in the sector. But again, seasonality with the USMJ sector as well. So let's take it with starting off how we ended the video last time with the hourly range that we were watching. And we said, we have to see continuation and break the high of the day to see bounce follow through. And if we don't get that, and if we break the low of hourly consolidation, that's a red flag. And that's obviously what's played out at this point. We didn't even get to the top of the bounce, 46.97, or I should say we did, but we double top there. So double top just under 47. Then we broke support at the end of the day. And we're looking back down at 44.90 and 44.63 is the next support levels. If the bulls are going to save this, they're going to have to turn around and break $47, which from where we currently stand is about 3% to even get to that resistance. So that's certainly possible for the bulls to turn around and get back to that level. But again, momentum was favoring the bears into the end of the day. So it's giving us a daily inside bar and we're watching, is this inside bar going to break bearish? And if it does on Monday, then we're going to be looking for further consolidation. So the weekly chart is clearly pulling back at this point. The question is, where are we going to form a weekly higher low? Now the daily uptrend has been lost on CGC. We zoom out and look for another higher low on the weekly. The question is, are we going to form this higher low at you know 43 or are we going to form it at 36? And as we talked about in the recent videos, that's going to determine what's the most likely scenario. If we pull back and hold 43, the odds of weekly continuation are more likely. And if we pull back to 36, then we're going to look for a weekly equilibrium into the spring and late spring. So that's important to be watching from here. And we're going to be watching the low of consolidation to this point. And that's down at 4463. Next level after that is 4254, another little base of support that was built there. Cron on the daily time frame. So Cron closed strong yesterday, so it was very easy for the bulls to break the high of yesterday. Obviously that didn't get any follow through. And you might have been looking at Cron and, and being faked out on that bounce continuation, but you always have to be watching CGC and the other major names. And as soon as we saw that none of those names were breaking any resistance or even making it close to the high of yesterday, that's a red flag, and we can't anticipate that Cron's going to have you know, a 5% plus green day if everybody else is in the red. So we pulled back pretty hard. Again, just a one-day bounce. This is not convincing for the bulls at all. Looks like the daily lower high is probably set now at 22.05. So we have our high of 25.10. Our low of the pullback is 18.72. It looks like our lower high is here at 22.05. And as far as the bounce... You know, the, a lot of people use Fibonacci's to gauge sizes of the bounce, but we pulled back from the high to the low, about $6.30, we'll call it. And the bounce, $3.15 would put us right in the middle of that range. And that's where we got it to. We bounced 50%. So we pulled back 630. We bounced about 315. Those are a little bit rough numbers, but we essentially had a 50% retracement 
rejected, and here we are heading back to support. So that's a daily lower high if we break support of 1872, and the next support level I'm looking at is 1733 from here. And again, the bear momentum in control all day for Cron. Hourly RSI will get oversold if we break 1872 on Monday, and we ended the day with oversold 15, 5 and 15 minute flushes on that last little push down. So bears still have momentum. We're still consolidating on the daily. The bounces were very short-lived, and that's why we have to protect when we see the momentum shift and the bearish articles start coming out and they get recycled and reposted. And that tells us, you know, big money has changed teams. They're no longer bullish and they're short. So we have to anticipate, or we have to be cautious, you know, playing against what big money is clearly doing with their shift and that sentiment. ACB on the daily, holding up a bit better. It's a daily inside bar to be watching on Monday. Volume still dropping off. A break of 746 will have us looking at 728. And a bull break. Got to make sure my magnet's on to get these numbers right. And if we get a bull break of 785, we have to break 790 to get that follow through. So the Bears had momentum here as well, but we leveled out you know, midday into the afternoon, whereas Kron was just a clear pullback into the end of the day. So still tight here, still some hope for the bulls to hold on and shift momentum, but it's all about how we break the inside bar on Monday. And if we get a bear break of 728, the low of consolidation at this point, the next clear support level that I'm looking at is 676. There's a few other support levels thrown in there, but that's a very clear little brief consolidation low that we did hit. APHA, also a daily inside bar. If we break 913, we look to 907. If we get a bull break of 977, we look to 989. If we get the bear break of 907, the next support level is 890 and then a lack of support after 890. So we have to be absolutely cautious. Volume, again, no major red flags on big bear volume, but clearly we have not shifted momentum enough for us to be confident in the turnaround. We got our low of the pullback, high of a bounce, higher low, and we didn't confirm the hourly trend change to tell us that our daily higher low has been set. So both ACB and APHA, some nice, clear, tight daily inside bars to be watching on Monday. TLRY held up a lot more bullish. It too is an inside bar, but we closed at the high of the day. So if we see a bear break of 76.87, we look to 76.51 and 75.45. And if we get a bull break of 79.27, let's see this hourly trend change attempting here. So we have our high, low, lower high, higher low, have to break We'll call it $80. It's 79.94. When you're that close to a psychological level, I just defer six pennies and I'll call that $80. Have to break $80 to change the hourly trend for the bulls and look for the daily chart to have a clear higher low established and to make our way back up into the mid $80 range. So very big difference with how we closed the last two days on TLRY compared to some of these other major names. Always got to make sure I'm recording these days. H-E-X-O. So also a daily inside bar and a double top at 730. Couldn't break that level and we started to see profit taking. Closed with momentum favoring the bears. So support is 703 and 675. If we break 675, next level is 651. And you can see we are shifting momentum close to losing the daily uptrend. Zoom out to the weekly. If we lose the daily uptrend, we're certainly due for weekly consolidation and we would look for the weekly higher low to form. So again, reminder, you lose the daily uptrend, you zoom out to the weekly chart, and then look at what consolidation on the weekly chart is going to look like. And a lot of these names have been due for weekly consolidation for a few weeks at this point. So daily inside bar to be watching. Bears have momentum in their favor with the week close, and we'll see if we test 675 support on Monday. TRST even tighter with two daily inside bars in a row. So this is just a, I don't really like the way the hourly equilibrium looks. So we'll stick with the daily chart. Break at 975, and we're looking at 966 and 955. And if we get a bull break of 1009, we're looking up at 1028 and 1030. So very tight here. If we get the bear breaks and we break under 955, next level is 926. This is still healthy consolidation at this point. There aren't any red flags. And if we do break down below 955, we zoom out to the weekly and say, all right, weekly consolidation is overdue. That's a bearish reversal candlestick after a seven-week bounce. And we need a weekly higher low to form. OGI, much more significant consolidation. Again, the faster you run up, 
The less support you build, the more exhausted the Bulls get, and the more follow through the Bears get on the eventual consolidation. That's why Kron has pulled back percentage wise so much more than any of the other major names in that same category in terms of tier one names. And it's because it ran so hard. And OGI is an example of that as well. So we are going to anticipate that a higher low compared to 587 is going to form. And that's worth watching tomorrow, or I should say next week, looking for a higher low compared to that level and for then just a short-term bounce to form a lower high. But the hourly time frame is getting pretty extended into oversold. So keep an eye on OGI on Monday. An ideal scenario, I would say, would see a drop into the 630s and a shift from there on the hourly time frame. But have to be cautious with the sector clearly in consolidation mode. Last hourly lower high is 692. Anything under that level is just an hourly lower high. And again, this is the most hourly oversold name that I've seen in the sector so far. We'll see if anybody else is more so, but just clear pullback for four days in a row now, five days in a row, without any short-term bounces like we've seen on the other names we've covered so far. And finally hit a, a temporary bottom, we had a second gap down open in a row. The bulls very aggressively bought that dip. See that volume behind it. Have we changed the hourly trend is the first question I always want to know. And the answer is no. So we have the low of 90 cents, the high of the bull move at 123, a really nice 35% move. We need a higher low to form. And then we need to break 123 to change the hourly trend. Otherwise, we're just looking for the bears to keep control. It is very solid bull volume, but if we don't see a break of these lower highs and change that hourly trend, we're still clearly in consolidation mode. And if you look at N on the weekly time frame, we have our low, high of the bounce. Here's our higher low trying to form. And it's almost like it's a step ahead of everybody else because it consolidated quicker with that bearish news with the CEO and all that drama. So this is almost looking into the future to a certain degree of what bulls want to see with a weekly higher low and then have to see the break of 167 to change the weekly trend. And if we don't see that, that's obviously not a good sign for the bulls. So a uh, big pullback, bulls attempting to shift momentum back in their favor, but still need follow through on the hourly time frame. And there's still a little bit of a gap here to be watching. If we can shift the hourly momentum, 136 is where the gap will fill. I'm curious with N because the bears have definitely been in control more so than any name because of that bearish news. But this volume does speak to me in terms of being very clear and very bullish with a significant amount of short covering, I would assume, mixed in there as well. T-God, we've got these lower highs and lower lows now. So anything under 390 was a lower high. Maybe we just set another lower high at 360. If we were to come down and break 327, then we would say, yes, that's our new lower high. And then we would drop to a lower low. And after 327 support, we're looking down at three psychological, essentially. And the bear volume is standing out. We had a little uptick in bear volume here. And the bear volume compared to yesterday's action, much more significant today with a little gap up open. So weekly consolidation clearly underway for T-God. The bulls need the weekly higher low and then continuation to change these long-term trends. Last thing the bulls want to see is a fade back into the mid $2 range. The further distance we put in between the temporary top that we've set at this point and where we consolidate to form a higher low on the weekly timeframes, the more distance in between those levels, the less likely that continuation of the trend change will be. VFF, double top, nice sign for the bulls to even make their way back to that resistance level, but we clearly rejected. The resistance was 946. We topped out at 948, and we got a nice equilibrium set up here. Let's see if it's clear on the four hour. So high, low, double top, and we're looking for a higher low on Monday compared to 790. And we'll look for this tightening range on VFF to break Tuesday or Wednesday. And that's either going to indicate whether we're getting, you know, clear further pullback on the daily, which would be weekly consolidation, or whether the bulls can keep this move up, which would certainly be surprising, but it's a bit surprising that they made it all the way back to the high at this point as well. Very significant moves, less capital required as it's got a smaller float, less liquidity, but a 20% bounce in just two days, even less than two days. NRTH, this is a penny stock. So, you know, uh, the volume traded on the day, we're talking $1.3 million, way less than any of these other names. So take that into account. But we covered it once before and it was looking good for this weekly trend change. And it's been nothing but follow through. 86, clear resistance approaching. Then we're looking at $1. 
And then we're looking back towards the all-time high. So the weekly trend has changed. And the question is, how long can the bulls keep this up? They're very overextended. I certainly would not suggest any bullish entries at this point. Short-term support is 79 cents. Need to keep that hourly uptrend intact. And when we lose the hourly uptrend, we're just going to look for a healthy daily higher low to form. Certainly do at this point. Anything above 67 cents is a daily higher low. Fire. This stands out. This is a glaring red flag. When you see a red Marabozu, which tells you that it was selling pressure literally from the open into the close, and the volume far exceeds any bull volume you see on the entire move up, that is a huge red flag. That's the last thing a bull wants to see. So at this point, we're looking down at 184. And when you see candlestick like this, it's almost like, you know, saved by the bell. Because who knows how low the bears would have pushed this. It literally was time running out that had a stop here. So I wouldn't even call 184 support. That's just where time ran out. So 184 and then 168 is the next level. Very clearly weekly consolidation is underway with a huge pullback. 243 was resistance. We topped out at 236 and we need a weekly higher low to form, but you do not want to see more bear volume than bull volume on the way up. And that is clearly what is happening here. Let's see how oversold we are on the hourly. So getting there with OGI and it's a little bit more of a steep drop. OGI has been over four or five days, and this fire was all today with just a straight dump and a volume climax. You know, every that's this tells me that everybody at the end of the day, the last hour was saying, get me out of this position with all that volume and another, you know, five percent drop at the end of the day almost. EMH, similar, not as brutal a drop, but the volume is definitely raising red flags. Key support, first thing Monday, 355. It's a triple bottom. If that breaks, we look at 336, and then we're looking down to three psychological. So it does look like our temporary top is in. It's a bearish reversal candlestick on the weekly time frame. So here's the psychology that we've been talking about when anticipating what's going to happen on these daily patterns. We have our high, we consolidate. Bulls say, okay, finally, I get a chance to get in. I missed this run. They try to see continuation, and then selling pressure far outweighs that, and it's just a lower high at 398. And then we're pushed back down to support, and we're probably going to see a lower low below 354 and lose the daily uptrend. And last, we'll wrap it up with CANN, volume climax, bearish reversal candlestick, certainly overdue as we are very extended in the short term, and the hourly trend really not being lost because we didn't really set. This is a difficult one because we don't have any real clear hourly trend. It's just a straight up move, no real support levels established. But on the daily time frame from here, if we break 315, we're going to look to pull back and form the higher low. And we will then look for a, a shift on the hourly time frame, an hourly trend change to indicate the daily higher low has been established. But this is a name that has broken all kinds of resistance levels. Just be aware that it is a rapid, fast mover. A little bit of capital goes a long way with a name like this. It is trading, you know, $4 million plus, but obviously compared to tier one, tier two names, that is not even a drop in the bucket. So overall, disappointing if you're bullish and looking for, you know, more upside, which would be a little greedy at this point, but disappointing end of the week to not get any follow through from the bullish days yesterday. This tells us we are clearly in consolidation mode. We already knew it. It was just a question of, can we see consolidation and then continuation? Or do we see consolidation with lower highs and lower lows? I speculated that lower highs and lower lows were the more likely scenario because of the size of the runs that we've seen, because the weekly charts were so overextended, and because the S&P 500 had not even consolidated yet. S&P 500 correlation, I'm not disregarding it. I'm putting a lot less weight into it in the short term, but that's going to sink back up and it will be, you know, valid again in the short term within the next week or two, in my opinion. But as far as, you know, the last two days, there hasn't been much correlation between the S&P 500 and the sector, but weekly consolidation, we knew it was inevitable. Now we're seeing it. And now we have the question, is this weekly consolidation going to be healthy? Can we form, you know, bull flags on the weekly timeframes? And what's the volume on this consolidation look like? Like I said, on these tier one names, we don't have red flags on this volume on this pullback at this point. Whereas for some of these smaller names like Fire and like EMH, we have clear red flags on the volume. So keep an eye on that volume. We'll see if we get some hourly oversold bounce opportunities again this coming week. Cron on Monday, if we break to a lower low on the daily below 1872, hourly oversold bounce. We're watching OGI for an hourly oversold bounce. 
and we'll see how much profit taking we get from here. I hope you have a good weekend. We'll see you with the USMJ videos tomorrow. Have a good Friday night.